Today's video covers section 6.3, which is use similar polygons. We have two objectives listed at the top. The first one is to determine if two figures are similar. Then, once we know that two figures are similar, we are going to use the ratios of these similar figures to find missing side lengths and missing angles. So before we jump into determining if polygons are similar, we first need to determine what does it mean to be similar. Similar polygons are polygons that have two requirements. The first one is that their corresponding angles are congruent. Or equal. So all the corresponding angles of the first polygon are going to be congruent or equal to all the corresponding angles of the second polygon. Second requirement is that the corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, so that's important. Proportional means that they have the same ratio. So if we were to set up all the ratios of the corresponding sides, all those ratios would be the same. They would simplify to the same proportion or the same ratio. So the idea with similar polygons, or the way you get similar polygons, is you take a polygon and you either blow it up, you enlarge it, or you shrink it down. So if you think about a model train, a model train you get when you take the real life train and you shrink it down. The model train then is similar to the real life train. All the angles are congruent between the two figures, between the two trains, and their sides are proportional. They change by some scale factor. In biology class, you probably look at figures of cells. The cell that you see on a piece of paper, that's an enlargement of the real life cell. That piece of paper figure, that piece of paper model, is similar to the real life cell. You took the real life cell and you blew it up. Now all the angles are going to be congruent between the two figures, but then their sides will be proportional. Notation, for congruent figures, you had the equal sign with the tilde. For similar figures, you use just the tilde. Okay, so if we look at example number one, these figures are similar. The first thing we notice is that all of the corresponding angles are congruent. So we have one angle congruent, we have the two tick marks here, we have three tick marks, three tick marks, four tick marks, four tick marks. So first thing we know is that we have congruent angles. That does not mean that the polygons are similar. We also have to show that their sides are proportional. So we have to set up the ratios of the sides. We have four pairs of sides, so we have four ratios we need to set up. If we look at this first figure on the left, we have sides of one, two, three, and five. Now, we need to figure out which sides those correspond to in the second figure. You don't get to guess. Don't just pick which sides go together. If we look at this side of 5, that's the biggest side. It's going to go with the biggest side on the second figure, which is 10. The 1, the smallest side, goes with the smallest side of 2 on the second figure. So that's one way to know. Biggest side will go to biggest side, smallest to smallest, etc. The other way is to look at the angles. If we look at this side of 2, it's between 1 and 2 tick marks. Between 1 and 2 is 4 on the other figure. That side of 3 is between 2 and 3 tick marks, which will go with 6. Now, these are our ratios for all of our sides. Now, what we need to make sure is that they all simplify to the same value. So that first one, 1 half, 2 fourths simplifies to 1 half. We get 1 half, and we get 1 half. Okay, both of these are requirements for the polygons to be similar. So the corresponding angles are congruent. We saw that with the tick marks. And the sides are proportional. If we look at the second figure, are the polygons similar? We don't have any angle markings, but we can look at the sides. So that first figure has sides of 3, 3, 4, and 4. Second figure has the same sides, 3, 3, 4, and 4. All of these equal 1. So our sides, yes, are in fact proportional. Are the angles congruent, though? 
we don't have any markings. The angles also don't look congruent. So in this case, these figures are not similar. Or at least we can't prove them similar. And I'm going to say the angles are not congruent. So the side's proportional. That's only one piece of the puzzle. You need both. Sides have to be proportional, and the angles have to be congruent. Okay, so if we look at example three, I'm going to tell you that those triangles are in fact similar, and we're going to show why in a minute. When you know that triangles are similar, you're going to write what's called a similarity statement in part A. It's kind of like a congruency statement. So triangle blah 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 is similar to triangle blah blah blah. So we have triangle something is similar to triangle something. Now, the order of the first triangle doesn't matter. So if I look at the triangle on the left, I'm going to go QRP. Okay, I need to match up the angles from the first triangle to the angles of the second triangle. So the first triangle order doesn't matter. The second one, though, it does. If I start at angle Q, that's one tick mark. That's going to correspond to M, which has one tick mark. I then went to R, which has two. N on the second figure has two. And I ended with P, which is three tick marks. That corresponds to L. So this is a similarity statement. Now pay attention. You must be using a similarity sign, not a congruency sign. So don't use the congruency sign from last chapter. Use the similarity sign. Okay, so now we need to list all the pairs of congruent angles. Now, you can either look at the figure or you can look at the similarity statement. If we look at the similarity statement, angle Q is going to be congruent to angle M. The middle angle, angle R, is going to be congruent to angle N. And then angle P, the last angle, will be congruent to angle L. So if two figures are similar, all their angles are going to be congruent. They're corresponding angles. We also know that all the sides are going to be proportional. So we need to write the ratios of the corresponding side lengths in a statement of proportionality. OK, this is important, that statement of proportionality. What I'm saying is, tell me which sides go together. Statement of proportionality is not going to have the side lengths, but rather their notation. So if we look at the first triangle, we have sides of QR, RP, and then QP. QR, that first one, goes from one tick mark to two. On the second figure, one to two is going to be MN. RP goes from two to three tick marks. On the other figure, that would be NL. And then QP, one to three, would go with ML. Okay, so this right here is called a statement of proportionality. Now, what I'm going to have us do is I'm going to have us go a little bit further and actually put in those side links. So I want us to show that these figures are in fact similar. We already know that the, the angles are congruent, but I want us to show that the sides are proportional as well. So this is the answer to part C. This is the statement of proportionality. I now though want to go further and put in those angle si or the side measures. So that 18.4 goes with MN, which is 9.2. RP is that 20.8, which corresponds to 10.4. And then I have the 10.8 and the 5.4. What we need to do is simplify all of them. So we get 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1. OK. Showing that the sides are proportional and that the angles are congruent, this in fact proves that the figures are similar. So in your classwork, you're going to be asked to prove that the figures are similar. What you're going to have to do is show both. Angles are congruent, sides are proportional. And then again, this part right here is called that statement of proportionality. Okay, next key idea for us to talk about is what's called a scale factor. So a scale factor is the ratio of the lengths of corresponding sides in similar polygons. So this up here, that 2 over 1, that was our scale factor. That was the ratio of corresponding sides.
So in example four, it says figure ABCD is similar to EFGH. We need to find the scale factor. So we need to pick two sides that correspond. Well, we only have two sides. We have AD and we have EH. Now, we need to make sure that those sides do in fact correspond, that those are the ones that go together. If we look at our similarity statement, AD, so first and last, corresponds to EH. Okay, so that's good. That tells us we do have the two sides that we need. Okay, so AD in this case is 10. That EH is 20. If we simplify, we get 1 half. This then is the scale factor. Now, a lot of times with a scale factor, you will be told to find the scale factor from one figure to another. So this is the scale factor of ABCD to EFGH. What that means is ABCD goes in the numerator and then you'll put EFGH in the denominator. Okay, if we go to the next page, we have another example I would like to talk about. Okay, so example five, find the scale factor from example number three. Okay, well I gave this one away. If you pick two sides that correspond, so for example, we know that that 18.4 corresponded with 9.2. When we simplified that, we got 2 over 1. So that is our scale factor. It shouldn't matter which two pair of sides you choose. Any two sides should correspond or should have the same scale factor. So any two corresponding sides are going to have that same scale factor of 2 to 1. And we saw that in example 3. In example 3, when we simplified all of those sides right here, we got 2 to 1 each time. That should always happen. So it didn't matter what pair of sides we considered, we always got two to one. Okay, so looking at example six now. In the figure below, tri triangle NXY is similar to triangle NMO. Find the scale factor. Okay, so what I want us to do is I want us to start with a statement of proportionality. So I want us to start with the sides that go together using this only. So it's a triangle, so there's going to be three sides. We have side NX, we have side XY, and we have side NY. Now use your similarity statement, NX, the first two letters. So right here, NX is going to go with NM. XY, the second two, is going to go with MO. And then NY will go with NO. Okay, so again, this is called the statement of proportionality. This is going to help us find the scale factor. This is going to help us find the sides that go together. So now we need to start filling in. Nx on our figure is 8. Nm is this entire side, so that's 13. XY is A, MO is 12, NY is B, and NO, this entire side, is B plus 6. Now, any of these that we simplify, we're going to end up with the same value because the figures are similar, with the same ratio, the same scale factor. For the first part of example six, we're just looking for the scale factor. So we're going to look at the ratio that gives us the most information, which is this first one. That then would be the scale factor. The second two ratios are not very helpful to us yet because we don't know A and B. Okay, so now we need to use the scale factor to find A and B. So I'm going to write this, these proportions again above. Okay, if we're finding A and B, we're going to need two equations, one for A, one for B. We can choose any of these two ratios to set equal to each other. So I'm going to set these two equal first. Then, if I set this first ratio equal to the last one, I'll be able to find B. 
So I'm using the scale factor. I'm using the two sides that I actually know to find A and B. Now, both of these we should be able to solve. This is what we learned in the first part of the chapter. We're going to do cross products. So here we get 13 times A equals 8 times 12 is 96. So A then is 96 over 13, which does not simplify. So leave your answer like that. Doesn't simplify, just leave it. This next one, we get 13B equals 8B plus 8 times 6 is 48. So then subtracting the 8B, we get 5B equals 48, and B equals 48 over 5. Again, that doesn't simplify, so just leave your fraction like that. So again, the idea with this example is you're using the scale factor to help you find the missing sides. My suggestion to you would be to always start with this statement of proportionality. So start with the sides that correspond. That'll help you find the scale factor, and that'll help you find these ratios that you want, or these proportions that you want to find the other sides. Okay, so moving on, this theorem if two polygons are similar, then the scale factor, which again is just the ratio of the corresponding sides, is equal to the ratio of the perimeters. So if you want to know what the ratio of the perimeters is, you can just look at the ratio of the sides. It's going to be the same. So example seven, consider the diagram below where ABCD is similar, again, similar to PQRS. If the perimeter of ABCD is 33, find the perimeter of PQRS. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for the scale factor. And we are going to consider ABCD to PQRS. We have this side of BC, which we can tell goes with QR, which is the other side that we have. So our scale factor then is 3 over 8. Now if that's our scale factor from that theorem above, that is also the ratio of the perimeters. So we know the perimeter of ABCD is 33. We want to know the perimeter of PQRS, but we know that when we simplify that ratio, we're going to get 3 over 8. So we have 3 over 8 is equal to the ratio of the perimeters. Again, a fraction, that's just another way of writing a ratio. Now we know how to solve this. You're going to do cross products. So we get 33 times 8. It's going to give us 264 equals 3P. Dividing by 3, we get P to be 88 centimeters. Now, just do a quick mental check. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. PQRS is the bigger figure, so the perimeter should be bigger than 33. That's how we get this 88. So again, whatever your scale factor is, or whatever your ratio of your sides, ratio of the perimeters is going to be the same. Okay, this key idea at the bottom. The scale factor for similar polygons. Again, scale factor is the ratio of the sides. It also applies to any special segments. So the triangle altitude, the, the height of the triangle, the triangle median, those, are, those ratios are going to be the same as the scale factor. Okay, we're almost done. If we look to the last page, did we accomplish the objectives? We had two objectives here. We wanted to determine if figures were similar, and we wanted to use the ratios of similar figures to find the missing side lengths and angles. Right now, you are to do example number one. When you come to class tomorrow, I will be checking that you have this example completed. If you're not sure what to do, look back at the previous examples. Good luck.